probably begin, and I'm going to be super brief because we don't have a lot of time and we have an awesome activity to do with you. Um, I just want to ask you to raise your hand if you've heard of Squeaky Wheel and know who we are. It's a little less than hand. Okay, so Squeaky Wheel is uh, Buffalo's Media Arts Center. Uh, we're located downtown at 712 Main Street, and what we do is um, basically we give workshops in media arts, film, video, digital art, to adults, also to youth. Um, we also do screenings of video artists and media artists, um, and what else? We rent film and video equipment out as well. So I think it's important to note that when we're talking about the culturals and we talk about squeaky wheel, we're talking about art of today. This is what's happening today. Um, especially with the youth, this is what kids are doing. They know how to manipulate um, computers better than I do sometimes. And I think it's important to know that we exist because I feel that we're probably one of the most important places to know about. So there's my... Uh, advertisement. Um, as for me, I was brought on board, as a, I'm a certified art teacher, so I was brought on board to oversee the youth programs to make sure that they're in line with New York State standards, and now Common Core as well. So if ever you're interested in having a workshop coming from us, I will find you teachers who usually are artists, and that's who we have today who's presenting, and it's up to me to make sure that what they are going to be teaching is aligned with Common Core, so they don't really have to worry too much about it. I just sort of make sure very quietly without them even knowing. Okay, so today we're doing a um, mini workshop in media literacy, and we have Shasti O'Leary Sudan who will be presenting to you. Um, she's first and foremost a Buffalo artist and one of the biggest educators I've ever met in Buffalo. She teaches me every time I talk to her. Um, her work is up at the Birchfield Art Center right now if you're interested. And with her, we have Alice, Alex and Rescue, who's also one of our Squeaky Wheel teachers, probably one of our most creative. So I'm going to hand it over to them. Thank you. So um, I, I'm going to make this extraordinarily quick, because uh, uh, we're, we're basically going to do an exercise in, in, in a form of lightning design, right? So um, since we don't have very much time, what I want to get across to you is that um, media literacy per se is uh, an understanding of the, that there is vocabulary, structure, grammar, and syntax in visual language. Um, the, the, since we are very, very much of a visual and image-driven society right now, and that has been probably, that is more true now just given the fact that your students have the power to generate their own media and their own imagery and do so on a daily basis, if not an hourly basis. Um, and their sort of textual um, communications are being more and more compressed in favor of things like Instagram, in favor of things, uh, something called Vine, which is like a new way of, of posting an Instagram except that it moves and it's like a bunch of shots in six seconds that repeats. You know? <laughs> there, there are some really um, uh, compressed means of communication. So in, in the interest of understanding what the components of a compressed means of education are, um, what we're going to do is we're, everybody knows what a movie trailer is, right? Mm -hmm. So in the next 40 minutes, we're going to make one. You're, we're gonna break up into groups and we're gonna make a movie trailer. So basically, I just wanna kind of break down for you what it is that we're trying to get at. Um, I can't look at you and read at the same time because I'm going blind. But, um, so what we're after is how exactly does visual language manipulate? And what expectations do we bring to our viewing experiences that lend themselves to the full gestalt of the thing, right? Because we see things in aggregate, we do not see them in components. And one of the reasons why it's so difficult to communicate to students sometimes is because what you're after is being able to implant a certain amount of explicit information where they already think they know everything, right? So. What they have is a tacit knowledge of things. They have an underground knowledge of things, but they don't have immediate explicit access to the components of what that knowledge is comprised of. So 
what we're going to do in this exercise is we're going to allow you to create components of your own in a filmic language. And this has been literally scientifically designed. Um, these templates that you're going to shoot into, that you're going to assemble, have been picked apart, determined to the point where some of these shots last 0.9 seconds. Not one second, not 1.2 seconds, 0.9 seconds. Because after years and years and years of doing this, you know, editors whose art this is to do, realize that that is the amount of time that it takes to get across a necessary piece of information. 0.9 <laughs> seconds, right? So this is a lightning primer on film grammar. Each of the filmic components that you will make, everything that you use the camera to, to, to create, is called a shot. Each shot serves a purpose of moving the narrative forward according to its type. Wide shots, meaning shots that it encompass a lot of space and have a lot of scenery, serve the purpose of establishing location, period, and context. Medium shots, meaning shots that are pretty much from the waist up of whoever your actors are, are used to establish identity and character differentiation. Close-ups are used to establish emotion, right? So close-ups in movies, close-ups in commercials, those are the things that are directly reaching into your chest and trying to pluck a heartstring in whatever direction that they're attempting to do it. But that's what that filmic language component is used to do specifically. So when we edit all of these things together in a correct narrative specific sequence, we hopefully achieve the desired effect, which is the encapsulation of a larger narrative. Now, when you're after the encapsulation of a larger narrative, essentially that's the same thing as, you know, you're, you're synopsizing, right? You're compressing information into a smaller amount. So any given subject that you are teaching must have a shorthand in their minds. That's how they access the information. So when, um, when the speaker before was talking about the fact that the information that enters their minds must find a friend in the brain in order to sort of plant itself, and then hopefully you get clicks that form in the brain, and you get the popular girls that form in the brain, and that they're, they're curious about more. They want more information on this thing, right? So what we're trying to do is we're trying to establish a foothold in the brain. Every time you're trying to teach them something, you're trying to kind of anchor something so other things attract to it. Usually visual means to do this is one of the most effective ways that you can pl implant information, but it's also one of the most effective ways that they can process the information that they have. Remember, they have the means to broadcast. They have the means to create media already. Most of them have cell phones. Most of those cell phones have cameras. Most of the cameras can do video, right? This is not very complicated in terms of execution but it is complicated in terms of being able to understand specifically what it is that they're doing. So, we're gonna take you through the scientifically designed trailers, we're gonna show you the one that we made, and then you're gonna make one, and you're gonna make one super fast, and we've got people who are going to help you to do this. But what it's going to introduce to you is the notion of how quickly information is conveyed, how little or large of an anchor that you need to implant something, and when you look at the end result, which we will make available to you, to everyone, we'll send out a sheet so you can write your email address on, and then we'll upload all the movies that you made, so you can go back and look at them. So when we made this, this took us 43 minutes.
I want you to notice is the graphic design and the type. Those give you immediate visual clues as to what you are about to see. They set up expectations. Now, in the program, so if we can, um, we're going to break up into groups. I would like everybody to count off one, two, four.
this is just one of many. And thank you very much for participating. I hope you enjoyed it.